Okay, hello everybody. This is Budridge and this video will be a little bit different. Uh, I got a comment on the YouTubes from Gavin Bales here. Have you got any more series lined up? And do I got more series lined up? Well, I have no nothing recorded, but I got a lot of things uh, I could record. And I will record. And I thought this video, I will show you some of my stuff. Really short, uh, a, lo a lot of things here. Just uh, showcasing some of my things I've been working on. So you know what to expect in the future on the Bud Labs channel. Um, initially, I, I thought I would make a video about this. My, my latest script here, which you might have noticed in, in the bottom right corner of the screen here. There's a notification. Every time I hit the uh, uh, i3 key binding, it pops up a dance notification displaying the key binding and the command that uh, that key binding uh, is executing, you know. So, uh, uh, and that, that is something, of course, very... Uh, uh, not many use cases for that, except if you're making a screencast. It's, it's great, you know. Um, and the, the way I do this is using this thing here, i3 message t subscribe um, binding here, uh, which lets me uh, make a, a, a subscription for i3 events uh, natively with i3 message. So you don't need any Python IPC or anything to use this. Uh, and you can, if, if you are a crazy person, you can create a, a, a Dirtac orc thing that in the end will uh, create a Dunstify notification with the current key binding. But I got really sidetracked while looking into this because Dunst was actually updated uh, yeah, today. They got a new uh, update. This is really good. It has been annoying me for, for a while that uh, I get a weird error regarding icon size, whatever. Uh, they also added rounded corners, as you can see uh, in, in, in the notification there. Um, but they also changed a, a, a thing, which I'm not super impressed uh, with this change. Uh, the notification summary no longer accepts markup. And that means that uh, I, I made like a series about Dunst, where we looked into this uh, markup stuff a lot. That doesn't really work uh, uh, as it used to anymore because of this uh, new change here. So that's a bit annoying. I'm also sorry for that sound there. Uh, I live quite close to the train station, so trains, train arrived. Uh, whatever, uh, train got sidetracked on the train tracks, railroad tracks. Um, okay, that's one thing. The i3 uh, message subscribe uh, popping up on notification, also looking into uh, the new danced features, rounded corners and and there are even some things here I haven't uh, uh, I haven't uh, investigated, but this looks very interesting. I have to take a look at this. I will do it after this video. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing I, I, I got lost in uh, uh, a month or two ago was um, uh, screen savers, lock screens, screen blanking, all of those things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this is what I got now. If I hit super shift X, at uh, first I get this full screen, then I get this lock screen. And the reason there is a delay there before the clock and stuff is because it actually generates this lock screen. So, so that first image is, uh, that's just an SXIV full screen that uh, covers the screen. So it can uh, uh, prepare the lock screen itself. Just to make it feel snappier than it actually is. Otherwise, it, 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 it takes like two seconds to, to get the, a lock screen if the image isn't generated. If it is generated, then it's instant. We, we, but we, we take that in a different video. So this is i3 lock, uh, i3, some i3 lock fork it is. But I also started to, to um, I wanted to try, um, you know, X screensaver, which is a screensaver for Xorg uh, that has been around for <laughs> since 91 or something. Uh, and uh, 
and which is really cool. I know now the video here is choppy. I don't know why when recording uh, real time video, I don't know, maybe it's just my hardware that doesn't uh, keep keep up or, or it's something weird with my uh, uh, FFmpeg command. I, I will try to fix that and I will not try not to display videos till I, I done so. But whatever, it, it looks fine on my screen. I don't get that choppy animation. Uh, and that's the nice thing with X screensaver. It's really, really smooth and, and nice screensavers. And there are lots of, I don't know, probably a hundred or two different screensavers to choose from. It's a fun program and it's also whatever. But uh, X screensaver has a really ugly GUI that pops up, uh, asks you for the... Uh, password and stuff you can uh, can customize it quite a bit but i thought it would be so cool oh so cool right to have the i3 lock screen instead of the normal x screensaver so uh, i can use yeah i3 lock when i want to unlock the computer because i3 lock you can hear it in the name and that was not as easy uh, smooth sailing as i thought it would be but i <laughs> I ended up writing a, a, a wrapper script and that script, it both generates the lock screen. It can take care of that uh, weird thing with uh, X screensaver and stuff. It also uh, remembers uh, the, the uh, DPMS settings and stuff. And it, uh, it uh, is actually what I use to manage my wallpapers. You can see here, it's still the same command here. i 3 locks blur was the last command, but this is not blurry because i 3 locks with blur it will toggle the blur of the current wallpaper. And I can change wallpaper to a random one here. You can also set the direct path if you want to. And, and you can use random or uh, a, a direct image or use the current image uh, is also an, an option. So this, this became like a, a thing on its own. Uh, and that's something I would like to make videos about quite soon. <coughs> Another thing I have been uh, uh, working on is a script that I call Polyfy. And Polyfy, uh, uh, let's go here and go to Polybar project here. It is of course Polybar related. Uh, modules, these are, this, this is kind of, I, all my, my, my configuration files and dot files they are becoming weird. But this is basically <laughs> the polybar config file, curated by Budry since 2016. I remember. Uh, here we can see I have a bunch of, of uh, weird looking polybar modules here. I use the custom IPC, you know, the hook modules as I call them. Uh, but uh, here I use just one hook that is set to, it, it looks really similar. Similar, the command polyfy, module option, and then the name of the same uh, module. And this is important. This is how you set, set these polyfy modules up. Because I kind of hijacked the, the, the hook module functionality here to get this. And I have one module here, for instance, that's called DL info. And DL info, you can see it in the module list here. We have date, which is this module, you know. Then we have uh, polypulse out, polypulse in, which is the audio input output. That's another story, another video, maybe even two, three videos. Just this audio stuff here. It's uh, uh, much more than it just looks looks like. Battery indicator, uh, light, memory, and this light. Right now, I'm using external monitor, so it, it it's not accurate. Should fix it. Whatever. Memory, CPU, wireless, uh, download speed here. And then I have this DL info and also window info. These, these two modules aren't visible because they don't contain any value, but I can set them with polyfy command here. Polyfy module uh, DL info. And then we can set a message. This is DL info. There, and you can see now it updates Polybar automatically. And you can use this command within scripts and everything, it, it, it works fine. But there are a lot more uh, actions to it than, than just, uh, just this. You can, uh, yeah, he, here I have a long command prepared there uh, that also changes the, the, the foreground color and sets an expire time to three seconds. Uh, let's do this. 
I don't know it. What am, what's going on? <laughs> Something uh, while updating my prompt. I have to look into this, and I will probably make a video about that because there's something weird in that prompt script we did, and I get that those types of errors. All the, yeah, I get it all the time now. God damn it! Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is my life. So, okay, whatever do this now it it prints here uh, this text here die after three reset and it has an expire time set to three so it will clear the the module automatically from from a command and you can set foreground colors background colors prefix prefix colors prefix background you can set the uh, mouse options for bo both the prefix and the message itself and you can do a lot of things with this uh, little script polyfy that i have created here but I haven't made it public yet because it's not 100% uh, complete, but it is actually a quite uh, 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 nice program or script. It's not many lines at all. This is the whole script, just uh, 57 lines here. Uh, the rest, this is more or less just documentation and uh, yeah, some init here setting up the option array and stuff but it's uh, yeah i'm really happy with how, how this turned out and I, I will soon release it to public and when i do so i will make a make like a release video about that and you can do a lot of things with that which brings me to the next thing i have uh, uh, been working on. Th this is something that that i um, been doing for a long time optimizing MT mpv for uh, an universal media player meaning i use mpv for both music and podcasts and, and videos and everything uh, and i recently th this is just a month or so ago uh, i i uh, made my own lua script here that also sets this polyfy uh, use polyfy here to update this module which displays info about the uh, mpv Right now, MPV is not running. There shouldn't be any uh, uh, MPV processes right now. Uh, but it displays the name of the last track here, still in, in this Polyfy module. Um, and I can start the, the last uh, thing I was playing in MPV with just hitting the media control toggle, which is the same key as play and pause. And you can see the text here, when I pause the media, uh, then the text here goes gray. And I also got that pause indicator, which is this thing, but whatever. Uh, but this graying out the text, that is done from this Lua script, which runs uh, inside MPV. This, this gets embedded into MPV and it's very efficient. It's much better than my old version when I was using the... Uh, Python i3 IPC, listening for the title, comparing that and doing a, some bash script uh, on the side and stuff. This is like, uh, uh, it's much, much more uh, efficient and better way to do it. And the, the official way, if, if, if there is any, to do <laughs> these kinds of things. So this is something I would like to show you how to set up a Lua custom Lua scripts because Lua is uh, I really like Lua I I, I think I will um, uh, try to get better at it uh, not just for MPV you can do all kinds of Lua and there are other uh, projects like Awesome WM and uh, the Love Game Engine uses Lua and many many other projects it's a good good scripting language. Um, yeah, so that's what that does. And yeah, this, this does more things because you see here, the last part here, 0046, that means it's 46 seconds left here of, of the of the media to, to play. We can make the window a little bigger. We can see here the status bar 46 seconds. If I skip here, you can see it immediately updates to 30 seconds left or 30 minutes left. And it works when I change the speed. Uh, what's that now? Is it this? Yeah. And you can see the speed, I set that with an i3 key binding. So I can change the speed from, from uh, when I'm in Sublime here without leaving Sublime. And you can see it also updates, or it should update. Yeah, it updates the, the polybar info also because it's uh, when I speed it up, it's less time left. Well, now it doesn't seem like it's working. What, whatever. Now it updated. <laughs> Sorry. 
but that was extreme case you know if it's speeding up two and a half second out of nowhere it, it, this works fine now it updates yeah i guess it's a little bit weird when the speed updates i don't think i have a have set an event here because that's what how you do it in lua here you set up different events to to listen for seek yeah i guess i should add an event that listens for uh, uh speed change as well i i bet there is one um and yeah this is a podcast this is not a video playing now this is a swedish podcast called code snack which is a programming podcast highly recommend it if you understand swedish if you don't understand swedish they have some really good uh english uh, uh episodes as well mm, but whatever uh, and when i uh, add podcasts here i, I use uh, th this this is an i3 menu uh, list just it's a rofi uh, that displays different here. So if I would change to Linux Action News, uh, and this I downloaded this uh, the first of July here because I have this is yet another thing. Uh, now that is added to my playlist. Now I can skip forward here, and then it brings me to this uh, this episode. Uh, and as you can see, it it have its own uh, image. Uh, <clears throat> and those images are um, or images. Here are the actual mp3 files in, in, in this directory. You can see it's mp3 files. And they also have thumbnails here in Thunar. So I both create thumbnails and I embed these uh, uh, images to the files. Some of them have images, like syntax here, for example. This is uh, automatically generated from the mp3. The, file, the image file was there. But many podcasts doesn't have any, any uh, images embedded. Uh, then I set it to either a, a random wallpaper, uh, just so I have a, a thumbnail when I'm listening to them, you know. So if I add this uh, bubble here now, uh, I guess this is not good, whatever. Death grips, but whatever. Just so I have uh, have an image here, because I like to have this window open, so I have some color or something at the screen at least, since I never see my wallpaper or anything. Um, but uh, it either takes a random wallpaper, but I also have this directory. Let's see here, pod, yeah, there it is. And this is yet another um, uh, uh, um, Rofi menu. Here I have a directory in, in my pictures uh, directory with all podcasts I listen to. And if I want to, I can, I, some of them I have saved custom uh, images. And if there exists an image in the directory with the same name as the podcast, then it will uh, automatically embed this image to the MP3 and stuff. So it's I can really easily set my own custom uh, uh, images for for podcasts that I frequently listen to. The, this is a whole thing on its own, and it's probably a couple of videos, and it also fits together. Yeah, let, let, let's do that. Let's go to. Uh, my RSS uh, reader of choice here and uh, download the podcast so you can see how, how it looks like. Uh, here, let's just take uh, whatever, uh, revolutions there, whatever, SSH. Ah, of course, that one didn't have a SHK. Ah, this doesn't have either. God damn it. This isn't really a podcast, it's more. Okay, let's take go time. S. H H, I managed to, to select like the two only feeds that doesn't have uh, embedded MP3 files like this, but many do. And then uh, I can select them like this, download that, and here it pops up. Now this is another Rofi menu, and here it lists. This list here is actually the content of this uh, this directory where all my uh, podcasts are saved, or the the images and I had go time here already so so then I can easily select that but if it didn't exist if I enter a new name here it will actually create that directory here and then that will be part of the list then it asked me for an episode name uh, I started to use because this podcast is good uh, a nice name here but many podcasts have the weirdest file names or uh, weird names uh, whatever so I like to just set it to, to the date and now it will save this podcast as uh, and now we can see here also uh, the download info is updated and now it displays here that it downloads this file 
uh, and when the download is done uh, you will see it will change uh, appearance here we can also go to new name because now new name will not uh, contain anything it will just be an empty directory here if I added an image to new name here before the download is complete now I really don't want to do it but then it would automatically embed that image and, and uh, it's usually really fast to get a good, good image. Now uh, the download is complete and I can click this if I want to. Now it's added to the playlist here. If I go forward in uh, MPV, there we have GoTime. And GoTime actually had, had, its, own, um, had its own thumbnail or embedded uh, image. And the thumbnail is updated and everything. So <laughs> this is something I've been working on. <laughs> I, I I I don't know. I've, maybe maybe uh, there is something seriously wrong with me uh, because I don't know. Maybe this is a good thing to do. Maybe I am a bit crazy. But I re I, I enjoy this just sitting and. Figuring out it would be nice, you know, and th this has been like a, Something that I never I just add a, a thing or here test it out One thing at the time I've been working uh, been been using MPV for like a year for uh, Like this for everything, but of course I didn't have all of these features uh, from the start, but I get uh, it's nice you know you start with one thing and then it just expands and gets and another really th nice thing with mpv why i use mpv for uh, music and podcast instead of uh, other media players like npn cppp and uh, cmus and stuff Be one is because i really don't like terminal applications uh, of, of that type you know that and one the main thing is that you cannot change the speed in, in, in MPD, but I can do that here. And I often listen to podcasts in, in particular at, at double speed. Uh, <clears throat> and you can do that here. Another nice thing is that if I skip here a bit in the track here. So now we are not at the start of the file here. We are at uh, five minutes in here, 41 minutes left. If I would uh, um, close this file now close mpv now you can see it just resetted the this here but if i click here or if i click uh, start and uh, toggle mpv then it will start and mpv automatically remembers where you left off in the last uh, track you were playing this works for videos as well and you you can override it i do it sometimes with spe in special cases for example when i preview my uh, uh, webcasts i i use this also but <laughs> whatever i am i am uh, i am what i am you know uh, and I do what I do, and uh, don't don't be angry at me because I'm crazy. You know, be be glad that I'm sharing this stuff with you because all of these things can uh, and will be made into videos. And we haven't even talked about or looked into uh, Pale Moon and Pentadactyl, which is like the biggest part of the all. You could see quickly there that I uh, did some hints and stuff. Where you can, I when when I downloaded the podcast. That is, uh, it actually executes a shell command because it uh, executed Rofi. It could ju ju just as well be D menu, and then I can do, uh, I can use scripts or whatever and and process hints from from uh, from the web browser. I also have like a very very intricate uh, <laughs> script that handles downloading of uh, YouTube videos with uh, YouTube DL and stuff. We'll see if I, I I don't I don't really feel like doing a video about that, uh, but um, I do things I do things and then we of course have um, the bash bud and uh, some other things that I never talk about, but uh, like. Uh, I spend uh, I, I I spend like October. I had another break making videos. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's do this. GitHub Bug Labs. I wasn't making videos for like th four months or something uh, uh, last winter because I was working on this thing, Bashbud, which is a insane project in itself and something I use, still use. I'm happy with how it turned out. Uh, and uh, whatever. So there are there are stuff in the pipe. 
I got more serious lined up. Don't worry. Have a great day, everybody.